Good morning and welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes of Flame. Robert Phoenix here. What's happening out there in the great wild, the world beyond? Uh, Big day yesterday on the world front, on the esoteric front, on the potentially fake news front. We had a terror event. A terror. A terror event. In London. Uh, Okay, turn the gain down, turn this up, there we go. How about that? A little bit better? A little bit better? Let me try this again. A terror. A terror event. Sorry, I just wanted to play with the, uh, the echo a bit today. I haven't used it that much. Yeah, so um, it went down in two places uh, on the uh, on the bridge in London and also uh, in Parliament as the Scots were getting ready to vote on the referendum and all that stuff. It was a big day um, across the pond. And, of course, it is a mirror event of what happened, uh, again, last year in Brussels where supposedly 300 people were injured, 30 people died. Look, I'm going to cut to the chase around this. First of all, we have the symbolic number 322, which is the number of skull and bones. Okay, it's the number of skull and bones. And 322 represents the sign of Aries when we initiate uh, action, will, violence, question mark, war, Is that what's going on here? Is this the season of sacrifice? Well, 322 is at the top of the charts when you look at the symbolism. And, of course, there's there's more. Uh, London's falling and all that stuff. What, What really went down? Did it really happen? Now, I know somebody who claims that they know somebody who worked at or is working at uh, the emergency room in London and they're wheeling people in there. It's quite possible. I also know that they had a drill in those areas three days ago. And a lot of the pictures that we've seen, I think, are have come from the drill. Because I think they allowed people to kind of walk by and uh, observe or, you know, just meander around the drill itself. So we had that, we had that going on in terms of the uh, sort of the preloaded nature of the event itself. And then the event went down and, you know, we're, we're kind of all trying to put it together. But here's my thoughts around this. Now, it's, I've invariably, I always have a Facebook friend or somebody in my astrological community says, well, I know somebody that was there. Like, really? What are the odds of that? I mean, not all these events, but I could tell you three. Right off the top of my head, well, I know somebody was there. One was uh, what happened in Orlando, which was very bizarre. A very bizarre event. Uh, and the other was um, the Santa Barbara, the, uh, the Elliot event. Elliot Roger. Remember him? Couldn't get laid. And he got really pissed off and started shooting a bunch of people and killing people. You know, that was a bunch of bullshit. Elliot Rogers still alive. and I. But I know a guy who knows Peter Roger really well, and he said it was very real. Sorry. You may not know Peter Roger all that well. That's all I'm saying. I just think it's weird that... And maybe this is just the state of the world because we have the... We have Facebook and 
internet and and I'm just connected to a lot of different people that these connections would happen. Anyway, there are a lot of pictures and very little video. Very little video of what happened. Of course, there's eyewitnesses and people that talk about what happened. And, you know, I think that we've all been inculcated and indoctrinated enough into this false flag terror reality that it is, uh, we have to be really clear and discerning about what's real and what's not real. It's just the way it is. So we have to, and have, at least I have, developed pretty rigorous filters. Because here's, here's where I think it gets really tricky. What happens is that we invest our emotional, spiritual, and psychic energies into these events. And you can just check any box. It could be fear. It could be anger. It could be resentment. It could be apprehension. It, whatever it is, we're feeding the beast. And I, I'd like to, re, you know, to reserve my emotions for things that are really relevant. I don't want to have to uh, spend them and have these non-corporeal beings just lap them up. And it's almost like emotional larceny, too, that we're supposed to feel this way. So forgive me if I sound a bit callous or detached or reserved around it, because I think we've been played many times. Now, we've also talked about how the nature of the events have changed and morphed, because I think for a long time, they were not real. Sandy Hook was not real. The Boston Marathon wasn't real. That bullshit event in Oregon, Umqua College, was not real. What happened in Roanoke, Virginia, was not real. What happened in South Carolina, Columbia, was not real. None of these things were real. None of them happened. They happened, but they happened under the aegis of some other event happening, or they were completely staged. Santa Barbara didn't happen. Now, San Bernardino, I have my doubts about. I think San Bernardino could have been a hybrid event. What I mean by a hybrid event is I mean that it is a combination of kind of real and not real. That there are elements to it that look like, uh, for all intents and purposes, it was a terror group that did it or two people who were disaffected and now homegrown terrorists, whatever they call them, I'll call them. But in reality, it was people inside the company, whatever company was on site that day, that were actually doing whatever it was that was being done. The same thing could be said for Orlando, where it started with one guy, and then all of a sudden maybe other people got involved. Um, the Paris event, again, could have been a hybrid event. You know, I've heard I've heard mixed pieces about what happened inside the Bataclan. That it was very real. I've heard other things where it was not real at all. So, what are we to believe? Who are we to believe? Especially when these dates are rigged up so symbolically. And if indeed this guy who's in the stretcher, where there is no blood. And there's very little blood in these events. Now, there seemed to be a tad more blood yesterday underneath the feet. But again, you know, not, not a lot of blood. And not a lot of video of people, you know, actually, you know, running around and scurrying. And just, there's just not a lot of it. <coughs> and some of the pictures that people look it just completely disengaged and kind of bored. Very strange. Very, very strange. 
and yet we're going to hear more and more about it. And there are going to be other things that have been pushed into the background. We'll continue to be pushed in the background as we talk more and more about this. And then it goes down the memory hole in about 30 to 45 days, and we're on to the next thing. We're on to the next event that shakes us, moves us, twists us up, and puts us in knots. Because that's the way the modern world is, and this is how it is orchestrated, especially as we get into these ritual days, which we will hear in the springtime with Easter. We already had the Purim uh, on uh, the Purim date. And the hits will just keep on coming. It's 9-11, 9-11, It's been a strange week. Kicked off with the death of David Rockefeller, 33 days before the Queen's birthday. How about that? How about that for some symbolism? And there's been some strange twin symbolism and twin imagery as well, because David Rockefeller lived to be 101, so we have the 101. binary, but we have the two ones as well, so we have the twin imagery, and there were two Chucks who died this week, Chuck Berry and Chuck Barris. Don't you think that's a little odd that Barry and Barris died, and Chuck Barris was the crazy game show host and producer of the Newlywood Game and the Dating Game, the Gong Show. And apparently he was also a spy. And not just any spy, he was a killer. He was an assassin for hire by the CIA. He writes about this, Confessions of a Hitman, right? Isn't that, isn't that the name of the book? They made a movie out of him with Sam Rockwell and, of course, George Clooney, Mr. Deep Inside, Mr. Deep State himself, the deep statesman, George Clooney. So Chuck Berry and Chuck Barris both died. Chuck Berry, I've heard, was kind of a miserable person to be around <laughs> If you haven't seen it, watch the movie Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. Some great live performances. It was a tribute to Chuck Berry, directed by Taylor Hackford. And uh, it was Keith Richard plays a pretty large role in the film, getting together Chuck Berry's house band and doing this, you know, kind of tribute movie. And of course, there are people that interview, the Taylor Hackford interviews people and they talk about Chuck and his life. and. Uh, the performances are pretty pretty amazing. I mean, Eddie James is in there, and Robert Cray is in there, Eric Clapton, Bruce Springsteen, Keith Richard. It's a it's a great performance movie, but he was not a nice guy. He was really, you know, kind of a great a asshole. Uh, so, and Chuck Barris was not a ni- nice guy either. There you go, another great a asshole. So we lost two great a assholes. Uh, I'm sorry. It's probably disrespect. I know a lot of people love Chuck Berry. Maybelline, come on. There'd be no rock and roll without Chuck Berry. So, um, but then there, then there's the David, the David twin piece. Because David Rockefeller dies and, and uh, David Brock has a heart attack. How about that? David Brock, who is uh, the partner or one-time partner of James Alafantes, just a weird name, Alafantes. It has to do with children, doesn't it? When you break down that name, anyway, he's he's he was one time partner. Um, what is his uh, uh, Media Matters? This is web. This is a website. And hardcore Hillary Clinton supporter, uh, fundraiser, big time fundraiser for Hillary. 
part of the team.